What's up everyone and welcome back to the comms channel and our ultimate guide series for the VRN76 and UV Pro. For this video we're going over third party software and a Python library that will enable others to create software for these radios so let's dive into it. Around the time we first started doing videos on these radios, we would sometimes get comments like this one from this gentleman with an inappropriate name I had to remove, who had concerns about the app not being open source and therefore the radio becoming completely unusable if the company decided to stop updating and supporting the app. Now I don't see that happening anytime soon as VGC has a new mobile radio coming out soon, the VRN7600, that will likely use the same app as these other radios. Also, as we've seen so far in this series, the radio is completely usable without any sort of app, and with the KISS TNC we'll cover later in this series, the app isn't required at all for the use with third-party apps like APRS Droid. Now this gentleman looks rather unwell, so we'll let his comment slide. I do think that the app, while far from perfect, is one of the strong points of this radio due to the easy programming and radio configuration, so there are some valid concerns there. Luckily we have Kyle Hussman over on GitHub who's been hard at work on a Python library called Benlink for communicating with and controlling these radios. So if you're a Python developer and interested in developing for these radios, be sure to check out his GitHub page and review his docs page to get started. Python is what I do most of my development on, so I'll definitely be looking into developing some things for these radios as well. Now the work done by Kyle has been the inspiration of what I believe to be the first third-party program for these radios by Ilian St. Hilaire, who's been hard at work on what we'll be covering in today's video, a program called HT Commander. And we'll have links to Benlink and HT Commander in the video description below. These will really open up these already highly capable radios to become even more capable. Now before we go through the setup process, let's have a look at the HT Commander program. So here we have the interface, and on the left side we have the radio and what current frequency it's on. Then below that we have the channels that are programmed in. We can click on these to change to that channel, and we can also right click on these to edit the channel if we need to make changes. Also when right clicking on one of these channels we have an option to show all channels. So when this is selected we can see all of the channels including ones that aren't programmed in yet, so we can easily right click on these to edit them and get them programmed in as well. And while we're on the topic of programming, we can also import CSV files. The apps for these radios have the ability to export channels as a CSV file, and we can import them using HT Commander. This is easily done by going to the Settings menu and selecting Import Channels, then selecting the CSV file we want to import. A window will appear with the channels from the CSV file and we can double click on them to see the details and we can also drag and drop them onto whatever channel we want to program them into. It's as simple as that. Now I know many people are upgrading to these radios from radios like Baofeng's that use Chirp for programming. And we've received many comments asking if these radios are compatible with Chirp, which they unfortunately aren't. I mentioned this to Ilian and provided him with the headers from a chirp CSV file and he quickly added the capability to read files in the chirp format. So for those of you with chirp CSV files with all of your programming, you're able to easily bring your channels over now by following the same process and selecting your CSV file in the chirp format. Now let's have a look at some of the tabs on the right side of the interface here. This first tab is for APRS messaging, and here we can see some APRS messages and data that have come through. This drop down on the bottom left here is for selecting the APRS call sign you want to send a message to. Here we can see all QST CQ, and this BBS call sign is a custom call sign I set up for my APRS BBS. The custom call signs are set up via the address book, which is the tab with the ID cards here. 
So if we go to that tab and select add on the top right here, we can enter in a call sign for the address book. So I'll put in N0 call dash five for this example here. Then for the name, I'll just put in test and then do the same for the description. Then we have station type. This can be generic APR station or a BBS terminal station. If we select generic, we have an option for OK, and it'll go ahead and save. If we select APR station, we have a next button to take us to a page where we can enter in a preferred route, which right now we only have standard. So let's hit cancel here and take a look at where this is set by going to file, then settings, and then the APRS tab. Here we can see the standard default route, and if we click on that and hit edit, we have the destination and digipath for the packets. The standard option is fine for most, but if you need to add additional, that can be done here. All right, let's go back to the address book. So the final station type is BBS terminal station, and if we select that and click on next, we have an option for protocol, which can either be raw AX25 or APRS packets. Then we have an option for channel, which is where we would select the channel that we have the frequency for the BBS we want to connect to on. Now this tab with the black terminal prompt is for connecting to BBS terminals. Now there aren't any in my area currently to test with, unfortunately I haven't set one up, but I'll do that soon. Now we do have the APRS BBS, so we can fire that up and test that out using this in the APRS message tab. Now if you're unfamiliar with our APRS BBS, we've done a number of videos on that and there's more to come, but there'll be a link to that playlist in our video description if interested. Since the APRS BBS isn't meant to run on the usual APRS frequency, we need to edit our APRS channel and set it to the frequency we have it on, which in our case is 145.525 here. So we'll go and enter that in for the receive and transmit frequencies, then hit OK to save it. Now let's go ahead and fire up the APRS BBS, which is the terminal window on the right here, where I'm connected to the Raspberry Pi that I'm running the BBS on. Now on the APRS tab we have here on HT Commander, let's select our BBS call sign, which is BBS in our case here, and then send a message of hi to see if we get a response back. And here we can see it responded with a list of commands. So let's send an L to list messages, or list bulletins rather, and send that. And here we can see there are no bulletins at the moment. So let's go ahead and post one by sending a P and then the text of the post and we'll just do test post from HT Commander. Then we'll go ahead and send that. Then here we can see the BBS responded and said that the bulletin has been posted. So let's check the current bulletins by sending L again. And here it is. We can see that the bulletin was posted the call sign of who posted it, and the date and time that it was posted. Speaking of BBS, HT Commander also has its own built-in BBS, which is a new feature that Ilium recently added that I haven't had a chance to play around with yet, but that's what this tab with the two computers with the arrow is for. Now this tab with the globe is for a map of APR stations transmitting their positions, and we can see their call signs by hovering over them. And the final tab to go over is the one on the bottom here, which is the packet capture, where we can see the raw packet data that the radio has received. So that just about covers all of the current features of HT Commander, and it's still being actively developed, so there may be some additional features added over time. If you like what you see so far and want to check it out, Follow along now as we go through the setup process. First, head on over to the HT Commander GitHub page, which there's a link to in the video description below.
Then to download HT Commander, we just scroll down to the installation section of the page and then click on download the zip file link we have here. Once we have that downloaded, we can right click on it, then select extract all to unzip it. And then we should have a new folder called HT Commander, followed by the version number as we can see here. Now that we have that downloaded and extracted, we need to pair the radio to the computer using Bluetooth if we haven't already done so. To do that, open up the start menu, type in the word Bluetooth, and then we should see an option for Bluetooth and other devices settings. So let's go ahead and click on that to go into that settings page. Now let's go ahead and put the radio into pairing mode. And once that's done, we can click on add device, then select Bluetooth. And eventually we should see our radio appear here and can select it to pair. Now once paired, we should be good to go and can open up the HT Commander by opening up the file called htcommander.exe or just HT Commander if you're set to not show file extensions. Now when you run this file, you may get this Windows protected your PC message pop up saying that Microsoft Defender prevented this from opening and that running this may put your PC at risk. The reason this is popping up is because HT Commander isn't a program that Microsoft knows about, which is why it says unknown publisher. And to make Microsoft aware of the software, developers have to purchase a certificate which costs hundreds of dollars a year. For software that costs money, this isn't a big deal and the developers will usually purchase the certificate. But for free and open source software like this, you'll often see this message pop up. If you see this when you're trying to open up a program from a trusted source, you can hit run anyways. So once it's open, click on the connect button and it should connect to your radio and you should be all set to start using it. Now the Bluetooth connection on these radios can be a bit tricky. If you do run into any issues, you can follow the steps that I've taken when I ran into issues in the past and this should get you going. If you need to run through these steps, you can pause the video here and I'll also include these steps in the video description as well if you need them. That'll do it for this video covering the HT Commander application, and I hope you found it useful. If you did, please be sure to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already because we have much more to cover in this series. And the next video will go over using the radio via the standard app, and I hope to see you there. Thank you all and have a good one.